everyone, this is Matt Show with Intro Stats, and today we're continuing our discussion about analyzing categorical data. So categorical data, we said, was data that was made up of descriptions of people or objects. Uh, we talked last time about proportions and percentages and some of the graphs that you can make from categorical data. Uh, today I wanted to uh, look at a couple more techniques that um, are sometimes used when people analyze categorical data. So, a um, couple things to keep in mind, we said last time was a percentage again is a part out of 100 uh, and uh, the decimal equivalent of a percentage is often called a proportion in statistics. So when you hear that word proportion, uh, think of the decimal equivalent of the percentage. Okay? So, um, last time, uh, so we looked at last time this, this formula that the proportion is usually an amount out of the total, or sometimes you'll see it in stat books as the number of successes out of the sample size. Um, and that's a very uh, common formula for categorical data. But actually, you can use that data to also uh, use that formula to estimate amounts. So um, if you multiply both sides of this formula by the word total, did a little algebra on this formula, you'd get this, that an estimated amount is, about, is equal to the proportion times the total. Sometimes we refer to this as taking a percentage of the total, but it's not actually really the percentage, it's the decimal equivalent of the percentage, the proportion times the total. So it's actually a pretty famous formula, and we actually use this quite a bit, especially on estimating uh, populations that have certain characteristics. I'll give you a good example here. So uh, the Center for Disease Control um, estimates that about 32% of Americans have high blood pressure. Um, and then, um, so if I was looking at that, maybe I read that in an article or somewhere on the CDC website, and I'm thinking, okay, what, do, what, what implications does that have for different populations? Like for the population of the U.S., uh, of all people in the U.S. Well, if we, if we look at the U.S. Census, I went to the U.S. Census uh, website. As of April uh, 2020, uh, the U.S. population was about 329.5 million. Uh, I put a little bit more accuracy, it was about 329,522,000 at that time, but remember it's constantly changing. So if that's my total population of the U.S., how many people in the U.S. actually have high blood pressure? In other words, what would, that would be my question, like, well, how many of these 329 million actually have high blood pressure? Again, the CDC indicates that it's about 32%. So we're going to basically estimate an amount using this formula. So you just take the proportion times the total. Now again, 32% is not a proportion, it's a, it's a percentage, right? So we need to convert that back to a proportion. We learned last time that that percent symbol means divide by 100. So if we divide 32 divided by 100, you would get 0 0.32. 0 0.32 would be the proportion. So where it says proportion in the formula, I'm putting in 0 0.32. And I'm going to multiply that by the total uh, for my population. So 329,522,000, I'm going to multiply that by 0.32. And I would get approximately 105,447,000 people in the U.S. with high blood pressure. Now oftentimes we would round that, like if this was... A lot of times you might see this written, because it's changing all the time, so it's not perfectly accurate in terms of the number. Like, you might write this as 329.5 million. So I, I might write this final answer as 105.4 million people in the U.S. with high blood pressure. But you can kind of see that this gives us implications. If you kind of think of hospitals and companies that need to... Uh, supply medicines for high blood pressure or um, anything they need uh, to deal with. That's a lot of people with high blood pressure and we have to sort of have a plan in place um, to, to, to help those people with high blood pressure. So it's a very interesting uh, technique that's used a lot in a lot of different fields. Uh, businesses use them all the time for kind of estimating uh, you know, how many of their customers have certain characteristics. 
So this proportion times total is actually a pretty famous formula. By the way, usually you round uh, to the accuracy of your, of your total. Like if you kind of think of it, if my total was in the millions, I'd probably round this to the millions. Uh, a lot of times if it's a smaller population, you might round to the ones place. Um, that's sort of some, sometimes common. depends on the problem. But I hope that's, that's helpful for you. Now another technique that you'll see uh, is occasionally we want to know if one percentage for one group is significantly different than a percentage from another group. Now significance is a whole big topic in statistics, okay? Um, it's, uh, there's a lot of uh, things we calculate in statistics that try to help us deal with this idea of is there a significant difference between two things. Um, one of the early, one of the measurements, one statistic that you can calculate is called a percent of increase. So a percent of increase is a common sort of statistic that people use when they're just trying to see if two uh, per percentages look close or do they look far away from each other. So uh, here's the formula. You take the higher proportion minus the lower proportion and then divide by the lower proportion. Now you, that'll actually be a proportion. So what you're going to do now is you're going to multiply the answer by 100 and stick on the percent sign to turn it into a percentage. So we sometimes call this a percent of increase. The main idea is the higher this percent of increase gets, the more significant the difference. Though you do have to be careful because there is a difference between saying something is statistically significant versus practical significance. So we'll kind of talk a little bit about that in the example here. Um, one of the key things about percent of increase is that uh, it can go over 100%. So it's not, it's not uncommon to see a 250% increase or a 400% increase. Usually if, you're, if your propor higher proportion is double um, the lower proportion, you'll have a 100% increase. Uh, if it's triple, it'll be 200% increase and so on. So you can definitely have over 100%. So don't think when you're calculating these, if you get over 100%, you did something wrong. Uh, you probably did it right. It's just that that means it's a really significant difference between the groups. Um, okay. So let's look at an example here. So we're looking at a, a suppose we have a, a, an experiment uh, where they're trying to figure out if a medicine works. Uh, we went over experiments like this in the experiment videos. But um, let's suppose we got a double blind experiment with a placebo and we, we randomly assigned people into two groups. One group got the placebo, the fake medicine, and the other group got the, um, the real medicine. And we're trying to see how many people got better, how many people um, had a showed improvement in their symptoms. All right, well, it sees here that a treatment group we had 57 total and 13 of them showed improvement. The placebo group, 61 total and 11 improvement. Remember these people were chosen randomly in terms of what group they were in. Okay, so the first thing you need to figure out is what is the proportion? Well remember the proportion is the amount divided by the total. So for the treatment group we had 13 divided by 57 which would be about 0.228 as a proportion. Now again, um, and then I could round this, just realize that in stats, if you use a number to, to calculate something else, in other words, I'm going to use this number to calculate something else, the more I round this number, the more my final answer for my percent of increase is going to be off. So uh, just have be in mind that the more you round uh, this, it's going to affect your overall answer over here. That's why usually computers are more accurate than when we do things by hand, because you tend to keep a lot more decimal places. If you notice, I, I told you before that you should round, usually round uh, proportions to the third decimal place or the thousands place. Um, so we could round this to 0.228, uh, but since I'm using it to calculate something else, I'm keeping a couple more numbers just to give it a little bit better accuracy. For the placebo proportion, that would be 11 people showed improvement out of 61, which was 0 .180. And again, I kept a cute couple more decimal places, 3,3. Three. All right, so now if I notice that the treatment group was higher, right? 0 
to 0.18, but uh, the question is, is it significantly higher, right? I can see that there's this one's higher, and that's where you might want to calculate a percent of increase. So a percent of increase, what you do is you take the higher proportion, 0 0.22807, minus the lower proportion, 0 0.18033, and then divide by the lower proportion, 0 0.18033. Multiply the answer by 100%. And it looks like we got about 26.4736%. I went ahead and rounded that since percentages we usually round to the tenths place, one number to the right of the decimal. So I rounded that to about 26.5%. Now that's, so the question is that what does that tell me, right? Well notice that with the percent of increase, the higher that percent of increase gets, the more significant. So if it was a 50% increase, or a 75% increase, or a 100% increase, uh, that would be more significant than 26% increase. Though 26% increase is not, is a little bit at least, it's not like it was only a 5% increase, it is a 26.5% increase. So we might think, oh, maybe it's statistically significant because that percent of increase is not, you know, it's not close to zero, right? It's a little bit up from that. I would kind of prefer it if it was higher, though. But then if we say, okay, so if my, if my percent of increase was high, then I'm kind of thinking statistical significance. The, this statistic is sort of telling me something about significance, that it is, at least with this percent of increase, it's statistically significant. But you also have to, a statistician can't be um, thrown off by these numbers. You have to be very careful about judging statistics sometimes. Um, sometimes numbers can sort of, not so much lie to you, but you have to take them in context. So one of the things to look out for is small sample sizes. For example, if I had, um, you know, if I had, uh, um, 6 out of 10 versus 3 out of 10. Well, that would be a 100% increase if I calculated that, but it's still just six, more pe six people to three people. And maybe I don't want to make a decision just based on that. And that's sort of what we're seeing here. If I think about these, the counts, like if I go back and just look at the counts, I only had 13 showed improvement in the treatment group out of 57 and 11 out of 61 in the placebo group.